There you are. This short, balding man's orange tunic and rather sizable gut gives him the look of a walking pumpkin. He is absent-mindedly patting his large pot haunch with a slow rhythm as if it were a drum. The man's old crooked smile and a strange gleam in his eye makes him look a bit mad. The man gives an exaggerated flourishing bow and presents a small card which reads only Jumble Murder Sense, Zazatek Sorcerer Extraordinaire. He then snatches the card from your grasp and proceeds to eat it, grinning wildly all the while. Somewhere in asylum is one barmy short. I had some questions, Jumble. Jumble yawns and looks away, drumming on his bell with the Ellie with the palm of his hands. Hmm. Jumble rolls his eyes. He turns to you, smirks, then bites his, bites his thumb. Fine, but I'd like you to remove Requin's curse. Jumble pretends not to hear you, instead belching loudly and resuming his belly drumming, his eyes wandering around the festal. Is there anything I could do so that you'd remove Requin's curse? Let's bluff. Jumble uh, raises one eyebrow and takes a step back. He opens his mouth abruptly, though his lips or throat don't move to shape any words or sounds. A torrent of incomprehensible babbling is my journal. pour forth. Jumble shuts his mouth and the babbling ceases. He peers at you through narrowed eyes, a self-satisfied smile in his pudgy face. Suddenly, you hiccup. And hiccup. And hiccup. And hiccup again. Jumble Murder Sense merely turns his head and waves you away. Uh-oh, looks like you just got a curse thrown down on you, Chief. What have you done to me, Jumble? Ugh. Ugh. That's gonna get... Hmm. Do I have an auto save uh, before this? Because that's gonna I'm get gone. annoying. Very annoying. Uh. Hmm. Jumble Murder Sense cursed me. Could you or anyone you know of your help me? My journal. We would recommend that you speak to one known as Celebesh. If he is not within the fest hall at the moment, he will be in its immediate vicinity. Alright, I guess I'm gonna go talk to him. <clears throat> Better ask him to do it before I tell him that... Thorncomb is gonna resume teaching. Okay. You're a master of curses. Perhaps you could <laughs> help me. Help you? Doubtful. No. Before you can respond, he sighs, shaking its head. Well, perhaps I could. What troubles you then? Jumble Murder Sense cursed me. Jumble Murder Sense? Ha! That sputtering mooncap could never beat me. Oh, the battles we used to have, though. But I'm past all that now. No longer my sort of thing, you see. I really don't know what I could do for you. After all, it's his curse. Not the sort you'd find in an item or some such. You know that you could remove it with simple magics. He'll have to remove it, and willingly. Well, could you teach me a curse then that I could use on him? Hmm. Well, I don't normally do... Well, I don't normally do that. I keep my curses to myself, you know. And besides, even a single curse would take one a long, long while to learn. More time than I'd care to spend on it. Perhaps you're just worried your curses aren't good enough to best him anymore. You what?! Of all the ridiculous... Now, look here, you knuckle-dragging sack of scars. Salabesh the Onyx is the master of curses, and there is no other. Why, I could give you a, but a single phrase that would render that nincompoop's cursing wholly impotent. <laughs> okay, you know what? That's it! You've made me do it! Salabesh utters a short string of impossible symbols. Words of power, which you note mentally for use, uh, later use against Jumble. There! See what that does to him, and tell me Celebash the Onyx isn't THE Master of Curses, then! Updated Ugh. my journal. Oh boy, I'm liking this! Yay, rivalries! Done. Now, if it could stop giving me symbols that I'm taking damage when I'm not, you jerks! All right. Also, I'm pretty sure that's Jumble right there, and I can't Ugh. touch him. Done. Uh. 
There we go. Took a bit. Let me talk to him, damn it. Okay, this is annoying. Is he moved? Is it? Okay. Jumble stares at you with a somewhat skeptical expression as you speak the arcane symbols of Salabesh's curse. After a moment of awkward silence, the Zalzatek mage note notes that nothing seems to have happened, and an evil grin spreads across his face. He opens his mouth to retaliate with another curse of his own, only to realize he has no voice. Salabesh's curse has removed Jumble's ability to speak, thereby destroying the Zalzatek's ability to curse others. He clutches at his throat, panic welling up in, in his eyes. Looks like the tables are turned, Jumble. What do you think will happen when anyone <laughs> you've ever cursed finds out you can't speak or curse anymore? Jumble drops to his knees, a pleading expression in his eyes. He looks ready to burst into tears. Will you remove the curse you placed on me and swear never to curse another who didn't mean you harm? Very well, I'll remove the curse then. Updated my journal. Jumble places his hands over his heart and nods vigorously. Alright. Jumble sighs with relief as you remove Celebesh's curse from him. He in turn removes his own, and your hiccups finally stop. He then bows humbly and casts his eyes to the floor. I'd like you to take your curse off Reekly. Updated my journal. Thanks. I'll have to go see what Reekly's right. up to after talking to the, the mage trainer over here. I'm trying to remember where exactly he's at, but it'll give Done. me an excuse to go somewhere other than the clerk's ward. There you are. Lady Thorncomb nods at you, but you're not clear as to whether she recognizes you or not. She's straightened her clothes and hair and looks quite the aging but attractive noblewoman, but still seems far away and easily distracted. Greetings. Are you here to train in the magical arts? Yes, I am. Very well. Answer me these questions if you would. She proceeds to test her intelligence and reasoning ability with a long series of logic and word puzzles. You answer the last of her questions and she nods. Please. You are a mage by trade then, I take it. No. I am not. She shuts her eyes and lets out a long, low sigh. What do you expect it, me to teach you, then? Waste no more time, uh, or my time, nor my students. Farewell. Wait, could you make me a mage? I could try, that much is certain. Would you truly give up your current profession? Yes, I wish to give up the sword in exchange for sorcery. Teach me the ways of the art. Actually, hmm. I'm gonna make a backup save here. Oh, come on, don't give me that. Oh, don't give me that! I'm gone. Done. Because I kind of do want to be a mage. Good enough. Now, let's see to this. Oh, you're not even going to give me the option? Please tell me I'm not going to go through the whole autosave process again. Actually, I might have to. Alright then, let's go back to the autosave. Thankfully, it keeps those. Actually, wait. When was that quick save? Nice. Oh, I must not like all the spells being cast in here. Okay, but at least I can make a save based on this. Alright, let's put that save here. Okay, now let's try. Done. In case I don't like this path, I can go back here and fix it. Or I could probably just talk to Dakon if it's really a problem. Ignis will one day kill you. Oh, oh. shut up, and I completely messed it up. I'm glad I made that backup. Done. Very well, I will teach you what I can. She pauses for a moment, lost in thought. A talent for the art alone is not enough. You require a means of giving it focus. Spells. Once spells are most often stored in a book, though I've come across mages who kept theirs in papyrus scrolls, stone tablets, embroidered silk, animal highs, 
He, her eyes seem to glaze over, and she begins to chew her thumbnail. Lady Thorncomb, you were Updated saying? my journal. Mm -hmm. Oh, forgive me. As I was saying, the art demands a book, or it's like before you cast spells. You can read, yes? We shall test you once more, then. She draws a scroll from a leather case hung at her side. Might you read this for me? The writing upon the scroll swims before your eyes, each symbol twisting out of focus whenever you try to read it. Almost instinctively, you relax your eyes, allowing them to take in the page all at once, and the symbols suddenly bleed together. The scrolls all lists arcane symbols, magical components, and mystical hand motions used to control the flow of mana. It appears to be a minor charm spell. This is a minor charm, isn't it? It looks like it's a spell to make yourself more appealing to others, more charismatic. Lady Thorncomb's eyes widen. Who are you to fool me so? She snatches the scroll from your grasp. Did you lie to me? You are a mage after all. Or a fiend, perhaps? Answer me. What's wrong? Updated my journal. I had not expected... Hmm. She gives you a long, careful look. What you read? It is written in the language of the art. Were you not a mage, it should have been nothing but by garbled symbols, utterly meaningless to you. Yet, as if it were clear as the Ar Amorian sky, you made sense of it. How is this? I think I may have known once, but forgot. Seeing the symbols just jarred my memory. Or perhaps a natural gift. No matter, though. She smiles at you. You have just sa shaped seasons, perhaps years of study off your training. Now, you can read spells well enough, but did you do you have a book for them? What is that, then? Hm, a spell book? No. What is that, then? She points to your journal. This is my journal. I've been recording things of interest. People have men and the like within it. You shall record your spells within it, then, as well. She frowns at the journal. A tattered thing, but it will do. She stands silently for a time, regarding your journal. She appears to be lost in thought and begins to chew on her thumbnail. Lady Thorncomb? She focuses on you again. Hmm? Oh, yes. Now, so long as your spells sit in this book, they are without power. Only words. The art demands you study the spells. Memorize them before you can tap their power. This requires a clear mind, so it is best advised you rest before doing so. Do you understand? Yes, go on. Excellent. Now, choose the spells you wish to memorize before you sleep. That is of the utmost importance. When you arise, they shall be fresh in your mind, rich with mana and ready to be cast. How many spells can I cast? Only one, perhaps two spells before you'll need the rest once more. As a fledgling maze, there is mage, there is little room in mind for more power than that. Use your spells wisely until you become more proficient in the art, but I would advise you to use them wisely even then. As your experience grows, you'll find your ability to memorize spells grows as well. You may only cast those spells you have memorized, so if you wish to use the art to, say, identify two different enchanted objects, you will need to memorize the identify spell how many times? Yes, twice, correct. Updated my journal. Always look for a chance to learn more. Even common folk might have some minor magics to teach. There are also recipes, books, and even stranger items that have spells inscribed upon them. Should you find one, simply examine it closely and, a cop and copy the spell into your book if you desire it. Take these scrolls, then. Minor magics to whet your appetite for the art. Return here when you are more wise in the ways of the multiverse. No longer may you train here without cost, but I shall be able to sell you more powerful spells as you gain the ability to use them. Thank you, Lady Thorncomb. I feel stronger. Alright, how does that affect things? It put me at level 1? Really? Okay. I mean... Oh, put me at level 3. Okay. Well, let's look at my spellbook. Okay, nothing in it thus far. Now, dumb question. If I talk to Dacone, can I relearn right. how to be a fighter? Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. What is your will? Hmm. Okay, so it preserves my levels as whatever I've been fighting as. Okay, that's good to know. Alright, so I'll keep going as a mage for a little bit, and if I don't find it to work out, then I can always switch back. Fair enough. And now that I have actually done that, I can talk to Dakon at any time. Can't let that go. Psst. 
Alright, that should be a good start. Alright, so these are the starting spells they gave me. Might as well go rest in the next room over. So, let me just, real quick... Take some pain away from Dacone. Come on, how long does it take for me to move? There we go. Now, we'll go and rest real quick. And then, we'll get on with it. I'm trying to remember... Oh yeah, there's plenty that I can do. It's always something. Man, I regen fast. Alright, let's move on. Alright, let's see if there's anything else. So, whatever happened to your becoming Mage Tutor of the Festal? <laughs> that vacuous, scatterbrained child of a woman. Thorncomb finally saw fit to leave the said Swarms and return to Chi so my chance is lost. I do not wish to speak of it any longer. <laughs> oh dear. I'm gone. Well, that pretty much summarizes that. Out of curiosity, can I get anything more out of you? Because I know I pissed you off a while back. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Alright, what do I want to wish... What do I wish to carry out now? Let's go find out what's going on in here. I'll probably wrap up after that. Meanwhile... Actually, actually I'm going to look in my journal real quick to see if I can find anything about... To find anything else about... Whatever... I'm probably not going to find it here now that I think of it. Eh, might as well look anyway. Okay, here's the information. Okay, in that experience of Dianara's in the Sensory Stone in the Fest Hall, I know that when she suggested I leave a legacy, it struck a chord with my previous incarnation. He may have been motivated to leave a legacy for himself, just as a precaution. If I could only find the number for it, I might be able to reclaim it. Also, out of curiosity, am I getting experience from... No, I'm not getting experience from memorizing stuff. Alright then, so it looks like there might be something I can gain from this. All right. This sounds familiar. Wait, I recognize your name. Before you is a stunning gold-haired woman dressed in an azure and violet dress with two long, elegant wings draped across her shoulders. She is surveying the room with a slight smile. She is easily the most beautiful woman you have ever seen. Well met, Traveler. How may I help you? The woman turns as you address her. She takes your measure, then nods slightly. You notice her eyes are azure. The exact same as her dress. She reaches up to brush back a stray lock of golden hair. Updated Who are my you? journal. I am called Fall from Grace. She studies you for a moment. You are new to Sigil, are you not? Yes, I am. Does it show? She smiles slightly. Not as much as you might think. You carry yourself quite well. What is this place? This is the brothel of slating intellectual lusts. She studies you for a moment. I take it by your question that you did not intake to partake of this establishment? Brothel of Slating Intellectual Lust? What kind of brothel is this? I established this brothel to give those lusts at full fer fevers that strike the mind more avenues of expression rather than the simply carnal. Much pleasure can be had in conversation and engaging in the verbal arts with others. Sounds dull. I assure you it is not. Tour the brothel. See this for your see for yourself. So this is a brothel where there's no intercourse? Only of a psychological nature. Rest assured, it is still quite stimulating. Bah, I can't speak. I have to... Hmm. Those wings on your back. What are you? She's one of the fiends. One of the succubi she is. She'll take her measure, then she'll take your soul to the lower plains, so she will. Your companion is correct. I am a lesser tenari, more specifically a succubus. <sighs> I'm afraid we're a little too common in the lower plains and elsewhere for our own good. Much of my race spend their time seducing mortals with various pleasures of the flesh. And Updated you? Updated my journal. I'd like to think that I have distanced myself from that. It is ultimately a trivial and non-productive way for one to spend one's time here in the multiverse. There's much more to life, wouldn't you agree? Hmm. I came here looking for help. Perhaps you can help me? Help? What kind of help were you looking for? I seem to have lost my memories. In so doing, I've lost myself. You have been stricken with amnesia? Far from grace looks pained. How terrible. Do you have any idea how it happened? Not really. At least not that I can remember. 
I woke upon a slab on the mortuary, and everything before that is black. You awoke in the mortuary? I think the dustmen mistook me for being dead. Or I was dead, or something. All I know is that I regenerate wounds quickly. I could be immortal, but I don't even know that for sure. Fall from Grace seems to be appraising you with renewed interest. Those scars on your body. She reaches out a hand as if to touch you. May I? Uh, sure. Fall from Grace drags her finger across her chest lightly, tracing the edges of your scars and following the curves where they blend into some of your tattoos. She seems fascinated. Those scars do look as if they would have taken several lifetimes to accumulate. They certainly do, though some are more recent. Fall from Grace steps back. Some of those wounds would have been fatal to a normal man. She taps her chin, thinking. What do you intend to do now? Hmm. I need to get my memories back, and my life back. I intend to scour the plains and search inside myself until I can piece together who I am and what brought me to this state. Far from Grace is still thinking, her finger tapping on her chin. I must say, I've never met a man who had lost himself in the literal sense. She raises an eyebrow. Forgive me, but your condition is intriguing. It is that. Far from Grace nods. If it will help, you are welcome to tour the brothel. Several of our students are well versed in the verbal art. Perhaps some of them will be able to rekindle your memories. Updated my journal. Have you ever heard of a night hag named Gravel? I am familiar with the name. Far from Grace pauses and thinks for a moment. Rumors cluster very thickly about that name, and most tend to discount her as a myth. But I suspect that she did exist, and that she made quite an impression in the cage during her stay here. She looks puzzled. Why do you ask? I intend to seek her out. Grace raises an eyebrow. Truly? I find myself compelled to ask why. I need information that she has. Is this information available from no one else? I suspect that only Ravel possesses the knowledge Updated I need. My journal. Grace rests her hand lightly on your arm. Consider this. If Ravel does indeed exist, then she is extremely powerful and cunning. If a fraction of the stories of her activities are true, then she is a creature that has discovered new meanings of evil. To search for her is not a quest to be undertaken lightly. I realize that. Do you know anything else about Ravel? She was said to be one of the hags of the Grey Waste, and that she was believed to possess powers, powers and a cunning far beyond those of her sisters. She came to Sigil long ago, and in addition to the evil she committed during her stay, rumors has it, rumor has it that her actions threatened the cage itself. Now she primarily exists only as fiction, a figure in children's stories. I imagine the Lady of Pain dealt with her as all threats to Sigil are dealt with. What is the Updated Grey Waste? My journal. A blight-eyed plain that lies effectively between Bator and the Abyss. It is frequently a battleground of the Blood War. Do you know what happened to Ravel? Ravel was most likely sent to a maze, one of the ladies' prisons. Is there anyone else who might know about her? Someone in the Fest Hall might know about her. No, well, might know more of her. Do you know what happened Updated to Ravel? Updated my journal. Hmm. Would you like to join me on my travels? Anna stiffens, then starts muttering under her breath. Who's to say she'll be coming with us? We don't need the likes of her, so we don't. Borrow that thief, Aidling. Woody clicks her teeth together. I'm off of the succubus coming with us. Bars know you're about as fun as passing a cow trout through your bowels. You bitch left your bone box skeleton of that to get so hard they'll be picking your teeth off the spire! Travel with you? Far from Grace smiles slightly. She seems to be ignoring your companions. That's rather forward of you. Hmm. So she is a- I know that she can be a party member, and I'm pretty sure that she's a priest of some kind, but... Hmm. Huh. Let's go investigate things for- well... How may I help you? That's the way I am. I appreciate your candor. I shall counter with some of my own. Why should I travel with you? You mean you wouldn't be interested in traveling with an immortal amnesiac who is searching the plains for himself? Oh, I would be extremely ins interested. She smiles slightly. Such a suggestion is intriguing, make no mistake about that. Then you would like to travel with me, then. If you wish me to, then there is, then that is, there is something you must do for me. There are ten students in this establishment. 
I would like you to speak to all of them, then return to me with your thoughts. Then we shall see if we shall travel together or not. I will go speak to them then. I will return when I have spoken to all of them. Oh god, I'm not gonna have time for that tonight. Okay. Speak to the ten students in the- Oh my- I'm not gonna have time for this right now. Oh boy. Modron? Where do I recognize that name? This strange cubic creature seems to be as much machine as it is organic. As you approach the thing, it silently stares at you with wide, unblinking eyes. Its face hasn't the slightest trace of emotion on it. Come on, Chief. We're in the built. We're in a building full of some of the sexiest chits this side of the multiverse, and you're stopping to talk to Mordrons? What can you tell me about them, Morty? Morty makes a noise of utter disgust. What's there to say? Annoying little clockwork pests. They're always working to oppose law and order upon the multiverse. Not good, mind you. Just law. Let's just forget about him and go chat up with the ladies, eh? Its voice has a metallic, reverberating quality to it, as if it were more a sound playing out on some warped musical instrument than true speech. Your greeting is returned. There is a soft click as the creature blinks. An awkward silence hangs in the air between the two of you. I had some questions. Identify yourself to us. I'm not sure who I am. We would know why this is so. I don't know myself. I just can't remember. All things should have a name. All things should be identified. We find your answer unsatisfactory, but it shall have to survive for the present. The creature pauses and blinks at you. We would identify ourselves as mode or drones, quadrum types, winged variety to the subject. I had some questions now. The subject is free to ask the, a question. What are you doing here? Our purpose here is observation. What are you observing? We are observing one of the establishment's staff. Who are you observing? Yes, but who exactly are you observing? The object of our scrutiny is named Dolora. Why are you watching her? We have not been informed as to the specific purpose our, or purposes which resulted in our being given our present task. The command of our superior pentadrone is sufficient reason to perform said task. As such, the purpose or purposes are irrelevant to us. What can you tell me about this place? A building located in the section of Sigil commonly known as the Clerk's Ward. We cannot give exact coordinates as the surface of Sigil changes at intervals we have not determined as of the present. The building itself is known as the Brothel of Slating Intellectual Lust. It serves as what may be broadly defined as a language school. The students of the school are primarily female who intend to, at some point we have not determined and which varies from student to student, become a factotum of the, a factotum of the Society of Sensation. We will provide a brief summary as to what the Society of Sensation is defined as, a faction whose core belief is that with experience comes true understanding of the multiverse and its secrets. That explains my new affiliation with them. Do you know anything about Ravel Puzzlewell? We know nothing of any being or object possessing such an appellation. Okay, so a very technical pe people. And it looks like- oh, there are ten doors here. Why do I get a sneaking suspicion? Done. Huh. Done. Never mind. Well, are there ten doors? I might have been too forward on that. One, two, three, four, five, six, Done. seven, eight, nine, ten. Nope, there aren't. Okay, then. So. Oh, man. It looks like I'm going to be exploring here for a little bit, then. And on the way, I can probably figure out what I need to know about getting to rebel. So, here's hoping that all works out. In the meantime, actually, what does my journal say about... Okay. So these are the people that I've seen that I can actually be a part of my party. So I've got Anna. Hmm. One of the Tenari, a creature literally formed of raw chaos and evil. Her body and mind the perfect template to tempt a man of any species, any age. She's the proprietress of the Bro Otho for slaking intellectual lust. Hmm. Interesting, but she doesn't seem all that dangerous. Curious to see how that'll work out in the long run. Also, that's still the best expression. Is there anything else interesting in here? It doesn't look like it. Man, you can get a lot of stuff in here. Alright, I guess we'll have to see before too long how that works out because it is late for me. I need to get to bed. Alright, so hopefully this has been interesting thus far. Man, there's a lot to this game. I hope it turns out to be interesting. That's all I'll say. What is going on here? 
Did you just get hit your... I'm very confused. I'm just gonna quit here before I get even more confused about things. I like the music, though. I will admit, the music is something that's been standing out to me as very interesting, especially compared to my normal musical selection of orchestral stuff. It really stands out despite that. Oh, well, I'm gonna go to bed. I'll see you all later. This game is so good!